One for you too. I'll drink yours. It has been a week, y'all. It has been a week. I have just, you know when you get a burst of energy and you just want to start creating, you just want to start going and just, just going into creation mode and cleaning mode. That's what I normally do. So when I am having a week where I'm full of energy and I'm full of things, even though I don't reflect, I'm looking around my uh, dirty ass beauty room. But I promise y'all, this earlier this week, I was cleaning up everything and I was creating. I was doing a lot this week. So it has been a hell of a week. It's Saturday right now. And I said, let me go ahead and, um, oh, let me fix this, hold on. Oh, can we get a little downward angle? It's Saturday, so I said, let me go ahead and do another girl, grab a glass, do another story, another thought, thought tale. Y'all love these thought, thought. Y'all love me just digging out all my dirty secrets and everything. But this one, I feel like is a good one to tell because it's also a cautionary tale. So taking me back to high schools. At my first high school I went to, it was a really big high school. It was really big. There were a lot of people there and they were very involved and they had like some type of little fraternity within the school. I can't really remember. I can't even really remember, but basically these guys and they were athletes as well. They would have parties, like team parties all the time. So I had two friends and I'm, I don't even know these girls anymore. So I'm just, I'm Brittany and Brandy. That's their names. Shit. I ain't saying nothing too scandalous. Brittany and Brandy. So I had two friends named Brittany and Brandy and they were going to be going to the party. So I was like, I asked my mom, can I go, you know, can I go to the party? By the grace of God, y'all, she actually said yes. Cause when I tell you my mother, Trish Robinson, she didn't play. Okay, she held me on a freaking, my leash was about this big, the size of my finger. She held me on a leash. I couldn't even go off of my block when I was little. I had to sneak out windows, sneak out doors, you know, do the two and three pillows to pretend like I was in bed at night. I'm telling all my secrets. Sorry, mama. Well, she let me, she ended up letting me go to this team party. And from what I knew, I really went into the situation, y'all, not with the intentions to be potting, not with the intentions to be doing anything, but going to the little party that my high school was throwing. And it was just like a little kickback. It was just um, food. They had drinks. They had drink drinks. I'm telling y'all, this food was all the way turned up. But anyways, we're at the party and we're about 30 minutes in and Brittany says to me, she's like, so some guys are gonna come pick us up. And what we're gonna do is they're gonna drop us back here and my mom is gonna pick us up from here and, and like, it's gonna be cool. I'm like, all right, I'm down to ride. So she met these guys. And you know, when you are a young girl and you are pursuing older guys, because let's be totally get the whole pedophile things. But I remember being very young and I'll be the first to admit, I pursued over older guys. Comment down below if you a real ass and you can say that when you were underage, you pursued older men. Just comment down below. I just need to know I'm not the only one because I sure did. I sure did. Now, does the feeling make me sick to my stomach that this was a pedophile? Yes, it does. It makes me sick to my stomach. So she tells me, okay, we're gonna go with these guys. Some guys she met on, I think maybe plenty of fish or crush spot. I'm really telling my age. Do y'all 90 babies, do y'all remember crush spot? Crush spot was like, that was the thing. But anyways, that's another story for another day. So she met these, met these guys. <clears throat> it was three guys and it was gonna be three girls. So I'm like, all right, let's roll out. So they come, they pick us up or whatever and the one guy who was driving, I don't even remember, I don't remember any of these guys' names. I never knew these guys. Brittany basically orchestrated this whole entire thing. So the one guy who was driving was like, um, I gotta make a stop. We gotta go pick up another dude. Cause it was only two dudes in the car at the time, right? So we're driving. And I start to notice that we're driving pretty far. So I lived East Detroit. And West Detroit is like, have to be like, 
40, 45 minutes away from each other, right? So I start to notice we're going pretty far and I'm getting kind of like skeptical because again, my mama don't play it. I already told her I'm gonna be at Brittany house at a certain time. It's late at night. She probably had to work in the morning. So I had to better been at Brittany's house. But I'm like, okay, I'm, I ain't nothing I can do now. I'm already in the car. And Brittany's like, chill. We just gonna go and we're gonna chill out with them for a minute. I'm like, all right, that's cool. We're gonna chill out with them. So we, so finally the guy comes and he comes on and he gets in the car. So he's like, all right, we're gonna go and chill at my place for a little bit. I'm like, all right, you know, just a little bit as long as you got us back in enough time. I think at this point we still had like an hour and a half. And he was like, where we're going is like 10 minutes away from here, so it's cool. So we went to the liquor store first cause I was grown as hell and I was drinking liquor and he was like, what you want? And I'm like, four locos, duh. Right. From Detroit. I mean, I can't help it. I, I'm ratchet. We ratchet. I, I try to class it up, but I'm ratchet deep and down inside. Well, we go there, we get the drinks or whatever, and then we end up going back to their place. Now, I noticed that it's a little strange. It's a really big building. It had to be like eight or nine stories type of building. It was huge. And I noticed that it's like really, really dark, but I don't think too weird about it because it's nighttime at this point so i'm just thinking maybe people are just you know they turned off their lights whatever we go in y'all so you know like when you go like when you first think about when you first go into an apartment building and you have like that main area i'm talking about a big like a really big apartment building so you have a main area it's usually like a lobby area or like a common grounds area it was pitch black dark y'all we were using our phones to get to the apartment so this one I started to think like, is it this abandoned? Like, is this for squatters? And of course I'm thinking I need to run, but number one, I don't know where the hell I'm at. Number two, I cannot call my mom and tell her I'm with these grown men about to go drink four loco into Lord knows what, because I would not have been going nowhere until I was 18. And I, I, that was just too big of a risk. Like it was either potentially go here and get slaughtered or deal with Trish. Uh, I was choosing, you know, going to get slaughtered because again, my mama didn't play. Ended up going there and we got into the apartment building, really raggedy as hell, like looked like a freaking trap house. So the one guy leaves, right? One guy leaves, the one that we went and we picked up, he ends up going, like maybe we're not even there a good 10 minutes. He's like, um, I gotta go, I gotta make a run. And I'm thinking like, you taking a call? And he's like, yeah, um, but but I'll be back. I'll be back to take y'all where I need to go. Don't worry. I'm like, okay. This is when my paranoia starts to sit in, y'all. At this point, we only got about a good hour. So we really need to be, you know, drinking these drinks, doing whatever we're going to do. And we need to be leaving so that I can get back to Brittany's house in time so my mama can come pick me up. Well, the guy is gone for a very long time. So someone suggests, I can't remember if it was Brittany or one of the guys, but somewhere along the way, we suggested that we do a twerking contest, y'all. Did I participate in a twerk? Absolutely. I'm from Detroit. So the DJ, the one guy was being DJ, he was like, what song? He was like finding the songs on like, you know those music video songs on like music choice on demand, whatever. And he was like, what song you want? And I was like, I want Waka Flocka, no hands. I'm about to kill this, okay? I'm about to show you some things. I'm about to show you what my adolescent ass can do. I Pedophiles, pedophiles. So, so I think Brittany went first and then I went. So it's my turn. Of course, I'm in the middle of the floor. I'm twerking hard, I'm doing my thing. I'm, you know, I'm doing whatever. Not even occurring to me that I am giving these grown men hard-ons, that these grown men are getting excited about my adolescent ass, and that they're probably going to want to show me how excited they are pretty soon. So we have the twerking contest, twerking contest is over, whatever. And the one guy, like, cause we each had, I guess, guys. Now the one, the main guy, he stayed there and he was talking to my friend Brittany. But it started to get a little bit weird because he started talking to Brittany and Brandy. So I don't know, was they gonna do like a threesome situation? I, I don't know. 
But then it leaves this one other guy. And I'm just, I can't remember his name. So for video purposes, I'm gonna call him Ryan. So this guy, Ryan, he was very fat. He was very sloppy. He was light skinned. He wore glasses and he breathed like, hey, what's up? You look good, ma. That's how he breathed and that's how he talked, okay? So it was pretty disgusting. So he's like, um, why don't we go in the back room? Red flag, why would you go in the back room, Deguerra? Everything is saying, no, don't go in the back room. But you know what my little 15 year old adolescent ass said? Okay, let's go in the back room. We get in the back room, he lays out on the bed. So what's up? What you wanna do? Ain't no TV in here. I mean, I thought we was coming in here to watch TV. Like, what are we, what are we coming here to do? So then it started to click into me. Oh, he wants to go there, but I'm not. So I make some type of lame excuse up to be able to get into the other room. Now at this point, right, y'all, we done burnt through this hour. We're, we're done with this hour. Like, so Brittany's mom is calling her and I know that soon after my mom is gonna be calling me cause it's about to be midnight. Now my mama don't let me stay out past no midnight. That's about it. So I'm getting really paranoid. So finally Brittany opens her mouth and she's like, okay, where's the boy with the car at? It's like, we about to call him. He's not answering the phone. Now I'm really freaking scared because I'm like, Lord, I'm not slaughtered, but when Trish come here, I'm gonna be slaughtered for real. So I'm very paranoid, I'm getting scared. Took this guy two hours to get back. So two hours, I gotta fight off Fat Albert. I'm hungry. The four loco then gave me a headache because my brain ain't even developed all the way to be drinking four loco. And this was the original four loco before they took it off the market and you know revised them. This was the original heavy hitter four loco. Okay, so my mind was just gone, and I'm, I'm trying to fight off that Albert. So it's a very scary situation. So finally, two hours later, he gets there. I don't know what kind of crazy lie I had to end up telling my mama, but. I ended up telling her some some type of crazy ass lie. Like, um, I don't, oh, it was the bus. I said, yeah, Brittany's mom didn't pick us up from the teen club, so we gotta catch the bus. It's like two buses. It's all the way downtown. I know you gotta go to work, mom. Like, don't worry about coming to pick me up. It's cool, it's fine. Like, don't worry about it, yeah. Which she probably thought was some bullshit because my mama was always one step ahead of me. But she, she went along with it. She went along with it. So I guess I got away with it. Well, anyways, so finally we end up getting there. He had to drop us off like two blocks away from Brittany's house because that's the last thing her mother needs to see is us coming in. We didn't end up getting back home y'all until like 2, 2.30. Now, I know I said in the beginning this was a cautionary tale. Why was this a cautionary tale? Okay, every time I think about this situation y'all, every time I tell this situation like when I told this to my girlfriend for the first time or any of my friends it literally sends chills down my spine like I just thank God that the angels had to be with me that these men were not just completely grinding they were grinding they were grinding because they knew how old we were they picked us up from the teen club so they knew we were way too young for them these guys had to be like 26 27 they were old they were old for us and they were grimy for the fact that they picked us up with the intentions to, you know, you know. They picked us up with, you know, they, was, they wanted to do that. Yeah, that's the intentions that they had. But thank God that they didn't pick us up with the intentions to like rape us and like murder us and everything like that. Because A, my mother wouldn't have even known where I was at. B, Again, my mother wouldn't even know where I was at. She wouldn't even know where to track me. And that these, the fact that these were very grown men. So it was a very scary situation to even be in. And I tell this story to really try to help young girls know that I understand that sometimes you want older guys, you feel like dating older guys is more attractive and more appealing because you know, boys in your age group don't get it. but. It is definitely a difference between dating an older guy and a grown man. Like, don't do it. You will, trust me, when you get some age on you, like I got some age on me, 
You will feel disgusted that an older man even paid you any attention when you were 14 and 15 and 16. Now, I didn't know that. I, I just thought that it was cute to be dating 27 year olds, but it wasn't cute. It was very pedophile like. So yeah, that is the story about how I almost got slaughtered in a abandoned apartment building, you know? Thank God I was with some pretty, I guess they were okay. They were kind of decent. They were pedophiles, but you know, they were kind of decent. They didn't kill me. I'm still here. Praise God. So any, if anything, I hope y'all share this video. Share this video with your young daughters. Um, I try to keep the profanity to a a minimum so it's shareable but I'm, I'm sure them, those one or two cuss words they didn't hurt share the video with them so that they can get the message of being careful always 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 I don't care how old you are tell someone where you're going to be and be completely honest and transparent about where you're going to be has something happened to me my mother my family my everything wouldn't even know where to look at look for me for look at me for so it's very important to be completely honest about that kind of stuff so yeah as requested someone has requested that i start an email for girl grab a glass so in the email you can send me in questions things that you want me to discuss on girl grab a class i give you my uncandid real scandalous Detroit advice so the email will be down below you send in your questions anything that you have you can remain anonymous and we can just come here and kiki and we can talk shit let me know what other topics y'all want me to talk about I really hope you enjoyed this episode of girl grab a glass and I'll see y'all next time